I'm Kate Harmon, and I'm the Director of Cross-Campus Engagement for the Lundquist Center for Entrepreneurship. And I'm really excited today to have with us uh, Micah Lundstrom, who is a UO alumnus and currently works um, at Aver Amazon Advertising as an account executive. So welcome, uh, Micah. Um, I want to start off today's questions with kind of giving us a little bit of background about your college years. Um, you are a fairly recent graduate, having graduated from the Lundquist College of Business in 2017. Um, can you give us a little bit of background about you know, what you majored in, what kind of activities you're involved in? Yeah, definitely. Um, thank you. That was an awesome intro. I, um, like you said, graduated from the University of Oregon in 2017. Um, I was in the business school. I majored, obviously, in business administration, but I did a focus in marketing. Um, and, I, you know, at the time, we had, like, um, the kind of themes we could add on, and so I did a consumer psychology theme. Um, and then as far as clubs, I was involved in AMA, American Marketing Association, which I enjoyed. Um, and then outside of that, it was really just um, this little marketing agency, which I assume we'll talk, talk more about today. Yeah, well, let's talk about it because um, during your college career, you started a, a marketing agency called Greenhorn Marketing, um, where you basically did consulting um, and marketing work for small businesses in and around uh, the Eugene area. Um, so I wanted to kind of start with like, how did you get the idea for coming up with your own sort of student agency? And like, what kind of work uh, did you end up providing for your clients? Yeah, awesome. Awesome question. I think um, the idea came from, I was trying to get an internship somewhere and I wanted an internship and I was starting to look forward um, pretty far in advance. I was starting to look forward to graduating and thinking like, okay, like how can I fulfill these requirements to get a good job? And everything was saying like two year, one year of managing social media, two years of client relationships, like all these, the jobs I wanted at least all had these like in their entry level jobs, but they had these kind of like minimum level requirements. And I was thinking, it's like, how the heck are we supposed to have that? Like, that doesn't make any sense. And so I think I decided I was just going to go get it for myself. I was going to, I was just going to go have, be able to graduate college and have like a year or two of experience in these so I could fit the requirements. Not that requirements are always so rigid when you actually do end up applying. Um, but that's how it was. And then the work we did was <laughs> honestly anything that people would let us do. We, uh, if, if they said, Hey, could you do this? We would say, yeah, like we're actually, we would, we would pretend we were great at it. We're like, yeah, we do that all the time. And then we would go figure it out. So we did just about anything from, um, digital marketing from like e-commerce sales to like social media management to like events to like just rebranding market research, uh, some videos. Like we just, we tried to do it all. That's great. Um, I know that at one point, Greenhorn Marketing had dozens of students um, employed underneath them. And um, what was always really interesting for me to see is that you had a really um, sort of structural, organized hierarchy with the organization, the way that you arranged it, where um, one student um, who entry level would train another and then they would get promoted to a different level. Um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, your, how you organized uh, Greenhorn Marketing and, and how would uh, your student employees uh, advanced in, in the agency? Yeah, we, so it started out with um, really just like two projects, I think. And so I would do it on a project basis at first. And so I would get, I would get a project. And then once I got a project, I'd say, you know, I would just have told someone that I could manage their social media or do whatever. And I would be like, okay, now I got to go find someone to, that can do this. And so I would um, gather students by project and then they would interview and be accepted to work on a project. So I'd say, okay, this company, I just, you know, sold them the idea that we could uh, manage their social media. We could create this much content. We could do this. And so I would think, okay, what are the roles we need? Okay. We need a social media manager. We probably need like two content, like designers, maybe we need one photographer. And like, I'd, I'd lay that out and then I would put that, those recs out there. And then we, I'd interview and then hire for those ones. You'd work on a project. Um, and I tried to, at first it was just two projects. And after that, on a quarterly basis, I would try to get new projects. And so as you went through a quarter, if you were someone that had been working on a project and had been doing a really good job or showing a lot of initiative, um, at the beginning, everyone had to reapply. And it was kind of like, if you did really great, then I'm going to hire you again for the next project. But now you're going to be in the manager role as opposed to you were a content creator, what have you. Um, but then eventually, um, there was one person who was just 
doing so well across all the projects, all the stuff, and it was getting bigger and bigger to where I just made him like what I was doing. Like I just split the work kind of between me and him and me and him kind of ended up doing a lot together. Um, and then there were some people that like, I asked them if they could just like, Hey, we're, we have a lot of these. Could you just always be the manager for social media? And then, so we could get a lot of people to work on social media, but there's someone that had regularly been doing it that could manage that on the projects. And so kind of over time, if you had been engaged in projects and you'd been like really interested in it, um, I would just sign you up for the next one. Um, and ideally then you, you know, you were probably more equipped to take on a better position. That's great. That's great. Um, how did you go about like sourcing your clients? Um, did you have like a certain sales technique of, of what you would do in approaching people uh, to give some of our, those in our audience, maybe some ideas of, of tips of acquiring uh, clients? Um, I probably have a lot more tips now than I did then. Um, then I didn't have a car or anything. So I, went onto Google maps and I pulled up, like I was in, in the business school, I pulled up like the map and I just made a list of all the businesses within like walking distance of where I was. And then I would pull up their website. I would pull up, like, I would just think of like, okay, this one, like I remember that what's the barber shop that's right there on 13th was our first client. Um, uh, I can't remember the famous barber shop that's right there. If it's still there. Um, and then like DIY that's down on the corner, like way down the street. Um, I think on like, I can't remember the streets, but, um, then, so I would make, uh, what could I do for them? And then I would make this list and have it, you know, on my phone or in my notebook. And I would walk down the street and I would just say, Hey, like, could I talk to a manager? And then the manager would come out and I'd be like, Hey, like my name's Micah. You know, I, I run this marketing, this student marketing agency. It's just nothing at the time, but I was like, just, you know, half of it's, I think, faking it till you make it. So it's like, I run this student marketing agency. Like we do business for, you know, we do projects for businesses around Eugene. Like, I've been looking at your business. Like, could I, could I set up a meeting to talk to you about it? And so some of them would say yes. And then I would be like, okay, sweet. And then I come to the meeting and I'd say like, Hey, like, what do you need help with? But also like, here's what I think we could do. And then, um, kind of pitching them on the idea of look, like students are going to be doing this. Like I was very trained, like this is going to be a student project. So it's not like you're getting some, like the experts in the, in the industry to do this, but I looked up how much the experts cost and we we're going to cost about like one fifteenth of that. Um, so what's the trade off? And a lot of people were really interested in it. You know, a lot of these businesses don't have a ton of marketing budgets or a ton of money. And so to be able to pay like a thousand, two thousand $2,000 to get what would cost them 20,000 maybe from, you know, a more professional uh, place was like a no brainer a lot of times, I think. That, that's great. Um, and, and like, when did, what year were you? Were you like a sophomore, junior when you started this? Because I'm trying to understand. I know a lot of our students like feel this barrier to starting something. They have to have like certain certifications and they have to have a lot of things done before they actually go out and, and do something. So I'm just curious, like what, what, when did you start it? And like, what sort of marketing skills did you have at that time? I think I had very limited marketing skills ever when I was in college. And I think that was okay. I think, I think I had an idea. I thought, I, I think at the time I thought I had really great marketing skills. Um, I think I, in retrospect, that was completely untrue. I think that um, I had, I had done a lot of sales experience. I'd done like some door to door jobs and stuff like that, that had gotten me kind of practice, like going and talking to people. But as far as marketing, I'd help my dad out with his marketing, like his company when I was like little and like some of that, but not, not really anything. I think it was a late sophomore year. Um, and I think the truth is, is that like with, with this or with, you know, my friend, I have some friends trying to start business and a lot of things like we get so paralyzed with the idea of like, we're trying to foresee the end and see any roadblocks between now and the end. And if we see a roadblock, we're like, okay, that's not the idea. And we're, we're trying to find something that we see no roadblocks. But in the end, like our first ideas now, especially in college, are, aren't going to be huge businesses most likely. And so it's mostly about like just doing things and then the skill, it's a, we're trying to build skills as fast as possible. So if you just do things, it's probably going to fail, but that's okay because you're going to pick up a ton of skills and a ton of practice. And so I probably learned more about marketing after having started than I really knew at all before. And I knew other things. Like it was not the first company I tried to start. I tried to start, I had so many dumb, I had like, I was going to do like Uber for groceries. It was called Never Shop. And you were going to, I was putting flyers on my neighbor's doors and like I was going to go to the store and pick up their groceries and they were going to order through this website. And so to, build the website I like taught I learned some like basic coding and then all these things like you pick up skills along the way to where none of those things succeeded but then later on some of those skills have come into come into play massively and so I think it's mostly about just 
doing things you, you rarely have i think all the skills you need to do even now i even i don't have all the skills i need to do my job today well i i love that i love the idea of like sort of faking until you make it but it, just going out and doing it is, is so important um having had you at a, as a student in class i know that greenhorn spent you spent a ton of time on it um can you if you remember back to that time period like do you remember what a typical day looked like like how many hours were you putting in i know uh, you often would share with me like you were up you know half the night kind of um trying to get, get through some of your projects i think yeah i think um and maybe we'll talk about it later but yeah i i guess going back to the question actually i think it at times it was a lot of work it was a lot of work at times it was at the peak, maybe there was like maybe five or six projects going on at once. And while you want everyone to be as invested as you are, they aren't. So I think, and also I was maybe a little controlling. And so I think like I was trying to do a lot. And I think so at times um, I was going to class um, and I was obviously hanging out with friends, you know, going to, going to the bars and doing every, doing all the things in college. But I was spending a lot of time, you know, all, I was working full days of like when I wasn't in class, like working on kind of these projects and kind of tracking them. and. Um, there's definitely some, you know, maybe late, late Friday nights when I didn't um, go out, but uh, for the most part, it was, it was a nice balance, I think. Did you use any particular tools or processes to help you stay organized? I had, we, I had, I remember I had weekly meetings with the leaders of each project. Um, and then they would tell me they had weekly meetings with their teams. And so I would come um, occasionally to the weekly meetings with their teams, but if not, just kind of meet with the the, the leaders weekly. Um, and then there was projects that I was kind of the lead, lead on too. And so with all of it, I think it was mostly just, I'm just taking a lot of notes and I'm just like, name of the project, what are the three things we need to do? And I'm just crossing things out, probably calendar invites. So no, really. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Um, like what, as you think back to that time period, what do you think was your greatest success? Was there a particular project or um, just the sheer ability having to operate this with so many um, students underneath you? Is, can you point to any particular parts that, that you're particularly proud of? I, um, I, I think I'm particularly proud of the fact that like we took something that was not at all there was no justification for it being real whatsoever and convinced people it was real enough to be able to, I think in the end there was like over 50 people that had worked on a Greenhorn project. And so now all these people like references as they went on to get jobs. And like when you go on LinkedIn, I think a lot of them have removed it, but there's at least, you know, 20, 25 people still with it on their LinkedIn. And so I just think that's cool to be able to, in the end, I was able to leverage it into getting a job. And I hope that a lot of other people at least were able to speak to experience they had as a social media manager or as a, whatever it was, um, as they went to get jobs. So that was pretty cool. And even just convincing, I think, when we originally started sourcing um, students for the jobs, I would, I, I would get a project and then each quarter I would get a new round of projects and then I would just go into classes and I would announce like an info session. I'd say, hey, I have this marketing. I'd, I'd ask professors, I know, can I announce this in your class? And I would tell, you know, Ryan, the other uh, kid who ended up working on it with me, like he would go into classes and we would hit like 20 classes each a day and go and say, hey, there's this info session today for this project. Don't you want experience on your resume? Like we can give it to you. Um, and then people would come to the info session and we would like tell them about this thing and then people would actually like, sign up to do it which was just baffling to me um and then we would like interview them and hire it was just the fact that it like had some sense of like actual like legitimacy was was crazy to me and i think i was it was really awesome to see that end up on so many resumes well and i know that you were in my class um and i know that several of my students have worked with you and it is really amazing to see how what you've accomplished because i i have done like a greenhorn marketing search on linkedin and it's still so awesome to see how many people have it um and really it was fundamental for their entry um, level getting an uh, entry level job, um, especially some of those that didn't have any kind of um, internship experience at all up, up to that point. Um, if you had to look back, what do you think was like the larger challenges um, in, in terms of maintaining Greenhorn? Um, I think the challenges were, a there were a couple major challenges. I think one, um, I think like management was a challenge. Like I think I always thought like 
oh, I'm going to be this great manager. But like in retrospect, like I had no clue what I was doing, like interviewing and like all these things. Like we didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know how to interview people. We didn't really know how to manage people. And so I think there were probably a lot of challenges to where like we weren't doing that that well, um, but we were getting by. Um, and so I think like that was definitely a major challenge. I think structure was a challenge. Like we were always trying to implement structure and organization, but like with all these projects going on to like collect the money from the clients and actually like show them the results we delivered and like keep these projects on track. And like you want everyone to be invested as you are. Once you have all these people working, you like, but then at a certain point for some people, it's everything. They're so excited. They want to be the next, you know, head of Greenhorn and they're like going in, but other people like, it's almost like another class to them. Like they could care less. And so it's hard because you're like, why aren't you, you know, as excited about this as I am like, and so you're having to like deal with trying to motivate people to do like do it or like different things. So that ended up being a challenge because at times we had people that were less motivated than others. And then with that happening, like maintaining structure and maintaining, like getting all these things done. And a lot of times there's a lot of stress because we promised big things to people like we're going to make, we made it, I think the boys and girls club a commercial and like we'd promised it's going to be done by next week. And like, we're not even close and like all this stuff. And so it, it was definitely hard at times, but it was, it was, it, it was very scrappy. Well, your first job out of um, college was at Amazon where you um, continue to work as account executive in Amazon advertising. Um, you spoke a little bit about it, but like, can you really share how much, having done this experience helped to give you, gave you the, the leg in terms of being hired at, at a prestigious organization like, like Amazon right out of college. Yeah, I think that um, more and more places like, definitely like if you come interview at Amazon, I don't even know, I don't know, I've done, I think in the last two weeks, I probably interviewed maybe like 13 people and I don't, couldn't tell you any, where any of them went to school or where, any of their GPAs were or anything like that has gone out the window to the max in a place like Amazon, especially I would hope most places, but like Google's Amazon's Facebook's Apple's, they don't care what your, your GPA was. They don't care what you really majored in at all. Like we have, I have a person that works with me that majored in history. I have another person that was a science major. Like it doesn't matter. It's about, they ask behavior now, like top places are asking behavioral questions to understand if you can give an example of demonstrating a way of thinking. And so in the end, um, it was just a great place to source examples from. I had so many times when I had, um, what's the time that like you messed something up? What's the time that you um, like hit a challenge and had to dive deep into the details to get around it? Tell me a time that you simplified a process. Tell me like all these different things. I had so many examples to pull from that. Um, it was, it was, probably like 80% of every, you know, all, I think like six interviews you go through to get the job. And so it was a big part of all my interviews. That's awesome. Um, uh, one of the things that, um, as you, as you think back to, um, Greenhorn or, or your college days in general, I'm just curious, would you, if you had to go back, do anything differently, um, whether that would be something different with Greenhorn or even your college career in terms of is there a skill set or area of study you wish you would have um, studied um, and anything like that? Um, I think from, I think I'm pretty happy with like the places I chose to get involved and the, um, the, the things I studied and the things that I really enjoy consumer psychology a lot. I mean, Troy Campbell was one of my uh, teachers and I just loved taking like some consumer psychology classes there and it was so much fun. Um, but I think if I could go back, I would have charged more. I think we were charging less, too little. I think there was definitely like, at times we were like, give us $800, we'll do this. And like we were doing so much work, like we could have charged more than $800, but I didn't have the sales skills maybe to get that amount of money. Um, so who knows? Um, and then two, I think I would have, if I really wanted to make the projects and the implementation and every and the solution stronger, I would have sourced more feedback from industry professionals. I would have said, Hey, I'm trying to manage, I would have went to the local company and say, hey, I'm trying to manage this. Like, can you give me advice on managing people in this scenario? Hey, I'm trying to implement this. Like, what's the structure you use to track your projects? Like things like that allow us to still be innovative and build our own solutions, but just give us massive leaps in our learning that probably you're going to take a lot longer. Cause I was just doing everything off, like whatever I thought best was best at the time. So I would have sourced more information um, and maybe just charged a little more money. Very good. Uh, great advice. Uh, our last question, 
if you had advice for today's students um, to try to do something similar, whether it's starting their own freelance or consulting business, um, what kind of things would you recommend that they start with or, or um, just start getting out and doing? Yeah, um, I think uh, two things. I think for me, as like people that are very entrepreneurial, like in order to grow a successful business, like for the most part, like we have all these stories. It's the problem is we hear all these stories of like Mark Zuckerberg starts his college, his, you know, company in college and go, like we hear all these like college success stories. But the truth is I think like most of college success stories, they start that and then they go work somewhere and then they come back and then you need hard skills to be able to be a very successful entrepreneur that you mostly don't have in college. And so I would, I would start business with the, with the thought process of trying to aggressively build skills because in the end, like you're going to make a ton of mistakes that you get out of the way. You're going to build a lot of skills that are going to help you later on, but that probably isn't going to be the business that you, you end up with. And so I would, you, you'll probably learn skills and then go start a different business later on when you have a different opportunity. So I would just not worry about whether it's going to be successful, not worry about whether it's going to work. I would just like, what skills will I learn through this and just do it. And then you'll fail and you'll, you'll have that skill and you'll do something else and it's going to serve you really well in the long run. And then as far as like starting it, I think it's back to that question of like legitimacy. Like it's so easy to be legitimate, especially nowadays. I go on LinkedIn and I see people that you could make a website and take one class online, like a free class online, go to, what is it? Um, like if it was like anything, you could take, go to YouTube, you find an Amazon 101 class, for like Amazon advertising, and you can make a website and you could find some businesses and call, call them up and say, hey, like I can run your search ads on Amazon. I can run your search ads on Google. I'm an agency, I do that. And if they say yes, you're a legitimate agency. Like that's it. And truth be told, 50% of the agencies out there are just about that level of knowledge. Like they are just calling people and saying, I can do it. And then they're learning and they're getting better and better over time. So I would just say like, just go for it and learn skills and don't be so focused on the, on it needing to be the super successful initiative. Thank you so much. This was awesome information. I really appreciate it. Micah Lundstrom, account executive at Amazon advertising. Thanks so much, Micah. Thank you.